we're going to look at how to make a button in App Inventor. The first thing that should be mentioned is that we are using Google Chrome. Uh, if you try and launch this in any other browser, it will not work. You need to be using Chrome. So that's the first thing. You need to get yourself logged in. You'll need a Google account. Um, but once you get yourself all logged in, you will see a screen like this. And we're going to start a brand new project. So click on there and you can call it whatever you want. But be aware when you actually finally make your app, your app will be named after what you write here. Now for today, I'm going to look at how to make a start button. So I'm just going to call it a start button. Um, this is the same procedure for however you make a button. So when you make a button, it's exactly the same process that I'm going to show you here. Now it doesn't like this because I cannot have spaces. So I'm just going to use an underscore there and click OK. As soon as you click OK, it'll take a moment, it'll make it for you and it'll transport you to your first page. Right now, this is the designer page. So on our designer page, we can see what looks like a phone screen. We've got a list of objects down here. We can drag any of these on and use them on our phone screen. And over here, we've got the list properties. It's a really good idea to just get used to where things are in this, so you know where to go when you want to change things. There is a second part, which I'll come to later, which is the blocks screen, okay? So this is screen one. And as I said, we're going to make a button, we're going to make a start button. So I'm going to come over here, I'm going to click, and I'm going to drag a button, and I'm going to drop it in. Wherever you drop it, it's going to go to this top corner. We'll deal with that in a moment. First, I want to change what the button says. So I'm going to go to the properties, and whenever you want to change something about an object you've got on the screen, you come over to this right-hand side, you've got the properties pane. Right, so here I can see lots of things I can change. Some are easy to understand, some might take a little bit of fiddling. Um, so background colour, pretty obvious. You can go the default or choose any of these. So I might want a yellow button. So now my background has gone yellow. Superb. Um, enabled means does the button work? Does it click? Is it clickable? I'm going to leave that on. We definitely want it to be clickable. Um, this is, these are ways of changing the font. We can change the font size. We can change the typeface or the kind of font. We've only got a few choices, but let's play with that anyway. Uh, we've got height and width. I'm going to leave those as automatic for now. Um, we can add an image to the button. Again, I'll leave that until a later video. Then we've got the shape of the button. So we can have default, rounded, regular, or oval. So if I change it to rounded, you should see that the sides of my button have just become slightly curved. Um, we've got then text text for button one so i'm going to make this go to the next page it's going to be my start button so all i'm going to write on the button is start okay click into there type in start and you can see now my button has automatically resized itself because i left height and width on automatic so it's done that for me um i can change the text color although i particularly like my yellow and black text so that's working for me and i can change where the text is aligned right so i've got a button but at the moment it doesn't know what to do now before i go and jump into the blocks and program this button telling it what to do i am going to need to go and make a second screen so i'm going to click add screen now the automatic name it comes up with is screen two with a capital s really important we know what our pages are called because when we come to program our button we need to tell it exactly what page it's looking for i'm going to leave it as screen two but let's just remember it's got that capital s okay i'm going to click ok and it's going to take me to screen two so after a moment's thinking it'll go oh you've made a new screen and i've come to screen two i can tell which screen i'm on because it says screen two here if i click on there I've got the option of going back. So I'm going to go back to screen one and I'm going to pop into the blocks editor. I'm going to click on that. Now, it's worth noting at this point that this is the programming for the whole of this page. Okay, so all of screen one's programming will appear on here, not just the button, anything you add to it will appear on this blocks page. And every screen has got its own blocks page. So I'm going to go to button one. And when I click on button one, I've got all these programming blocks available to me. And 
there are lots of other options which we'll explore at a later date, but I'll just focus on how to make a button work for now. So I've got when button one click do. So this is basically saying when the button is clicked, do something. Um, so I want it to open page two, or screen two as it's actually called. So I'm going to go control. And if I scroll down here, we will find the block called open another screen, screen name. Brilliant. Let's drag that in and it drops into that space there, like so. And you get a nice satisfying click when it does so. But at the moment it's saying screen name and then there's a, an empty space. Now we need to fill that space if it's going to work. So let's go to the text box and right at the top there's an empty text box with some quotation marks. Let's pop that in here and drop it there. And in here we need to write the exact name of the screen. And as I said earlier, it's got that capital S in screen two. So I'm going to type in here screen two, precisely how it's written there. Now that is all of the coding you will need for that button. And if we go back to the designer, we'll be able to see that button's still there. It's programmed and ready to go. But when I click on it, it won't work because within Chrome, none of the functions actually programmed will work for that. We'll need to connect to an emulator on our phone or on our computer. Now we can see the uh, companion app that I've installed onto an Android device and we're going to use the QR code to connect it to our app. If you want to know how to do this, just check out my other video. Um, so we're going to connect it to our button app and there we can see our button. And when I click on that button, the programming should work and it will take me to screen two. So I'll click it now. And there you go, you can see it's loaded screen two, which at the minute hasn't got anything on it. We're going to do that next. So just remember, whenever you want to make a button, uh, these are the three blocks you're going to need. And the only thing that you'll need to change is which button you're clicking and the name of the screen that you want to go to.